Hi, uh, students. Sometimes in the evening I do something called a video boost, and I try to tie up some loose ends from lecture. Um, the first thing I want to say is you're not going to learn the functional groups until you really sit down and study them and memorize them almost like using flashcards. Use flashcards and think about what's different in one versus the other. You really have to do that, and that's hard for people. We didn't cover all of them in tremendous detail, but I will be incorporating some of them into my problems that I do here and tomorrow in class. Uh, but really sit down this week and try to get that under control. Um, the other thing is I gave you a functional group worksheet. It had um, a bunch of uh, pharmaceuticals, and you were supposed to name the functional groups. Um, this was a relatively hard assignment, uh, but it is not a homework assignment. And the answers to this have already been posted, as have the answers to the quiz and the answers to um, the answers to that translation problem are already up there. And all you have to do is go to the um, virtual reserves. And I think people are still having trouble with that. Um, what I wanted to take a minute was to give you a couple more problems to do um, in regard to translating um, condensed formula into full formula, because some people are still struggling with that. So I'm just going to kind of spontaneously throw a couple problems down here. You can do these problems on your own and certainly show them to me. Some people wanted more problems to do. So here's a problem for you to do. Now it's very common on the end of a chain to put the hydrogen attached to the end carbon to the left. That's very, very common. So say we had this. See what you can come up with here. It wouldn't be bad to name all the functional groups that you're coming up with. Hopefully this works. Sometimes I occasionally leave a hydrogen out. Okay. Um, try this. Again, sometimes groups are written backwards. This is going to test to see if you know your, um, your car carboxylic acid derivatives. See if you can do this one. This one is very tough. Things in parentheses are hanging off the chain. Okay. So let's try that. See if you can draw that. So if you can translate those out and just pop by my office, I'll go over them with you. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is how to deal with other atoms than oxygen. As I told you in class, oxygen doesn't make any difference in the saturated formula. So what I'm moving to now is what we call a saturation number. What's my time like? 320. I'm 320 in? 324 in, yeah. Okay. Unsaturation number. Okay, and we were starting to work on this on Friday, and we're going to continue working on it tomorrow. I want to just show you something to think about. If you have methane, okay, methane is CH4, and it follows the formula CNH2N plus 2, where N equals the number of carbons. And that's really the only formula you need to know. Now, I want you to think about what happens when you put an oxygen in. So, for example, supposing I just add an oxygen to that methane. Do you agree that it is still saturated? It has all single bonds, and what is the formula? It's CH4 up. So what I was saying in class is that the oxygen makes no difference in the saturated formula. It's really just like a linker atom. Okay, now... Consider what happens when you add a nitrogen. It's a whole different ballgame. If you add a nitrogen, as you can see, there's an extra slot for a hydrogen. So the saturated formula here for this methane derivative is CH5N. So what lesson does this teach you? It teaches you that you have to add 1H for every N in your formula, to your saturated formula. So I'm just going to put here add... One, do nothing. Okay, 
So then go further in your thinking, because you can figure most of this out. Supposing I put a halogen in. It shouldn't be so surprising. If you put a halogen into the structure, the halogen will replace a hydrogen. So what happens to the number of hydrogens? It's CH3Cl. So what happens? You have to take it down by one for every halogen in the structure. So for example, supposing you had, let's just start with something with oxygen. What's my time? 532. Okay, supposing you had this, C6H, and we're going to do some like this tomorrow, but C6H8, um, so oh, okay? This is the actual formula. So what I told you in class is you want to compare that to the so-called saturated formula. How do you calculate the saturated formula? You use that formula, CnH2n plus 2. So I'm going to create the saturated formula. And we really just started this. We have to work on this. It's going to be C6H2n plus 2. So it'll be 12 plus 2. It's 14. Oh, okay. The difference is 6. I'm laughing because every time I do this lately, I get 6. I'm not trying to do that. So 6 divided by 2, because we're interested in pairs of hydrogens, equals 3. Okay, what does that mean in terms of writing isomers? Supposing my problem is write four isomers. That's what I gave you as homework over the weekend, to write a bunch of isomers for your formula. I'm going to work with this formula, okay? But this tells me what I need to include in the structure. So for example, I could just put three double bonds in the structure. Don't forget, though, that the double bond can involve oxygen. That not doing anything is to the saturated formula, not to the actual formula. This has as much unsaturation as this does. Now, to finish this off, I'd have to add one more carbon. What else could I do? Um, I could make a ring. Okay, that has an unsaturation of three. Why? Two double bonds and a ring. It's got six carbons. I need to add an O, so I'm going to add an OH. Realize O's can be a part of rings. So I could do something like this. This only has four carbons, so I'll add two more carbons to it. See how quickly I'm doing this. I'm not putting immense amount of thought into this. I'm just keeping track of the elements that I'm putting in, the carbons and the oxygen. I could put a triple bond and some kind of a ring. Let's see how many carbons I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. That does it. That's an ether. So what functional groups do we have? Ether, alkyne, aldehyde. Why? Because there's an H there. Alkene, 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 that is not an aromatic. What kind of alcohol? Secondary alcohol, ether, alkene, alkene. So as you're drawing your structures, you should write um, what the functional groups are. Okay, so these problems are infinite. So supposing I demonstrate what I just showed you. Supposing you have a formula like C, um, A, let's hope I don't get three again, H, Five. I'm going to make it super unsaturated. O, C, L, 2, N, 2. I mean, that's crazy, right? You're like, that's a crazy formula. Okay, this is the actual formula, and this is what we want to draw isomers up. So how would I draw the saturated formula? We have to take into account what I did at the very beginning of this boost. C, A, H, 2, N, plus 2. That's going to be 18, okay? Now notice they don't jive. This is an odd number. The oxygen does nothing. What does chlorine do? Chlorine, you have to subtract two out for every chlorine in the structure because it takes the place of a hydrogen. These are just like hydrogens. Nitrogen has an extra slot. So what do you have to do? And my formula didn't come out right. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to make it one nitrogen. My number of hydrogens isn't working out. But for every nitrogen, we have to add one. So it'll be 17. So I subtract one for every halogen, add one for every nitrogen. Why did my formula not work? I was going to come out with, that, with, not, with a um, complex number here instead of a whole number. So you take the difference. Okay, it's 12. Thank goodness I did not get 6 again. I mean 3 again. I've got 6. What is an unsaturation of 6? Well, for example, I could do something like this. I'm just going to give one example and stop. 945. What am I? 945. Okay. Well, you certainly could put a benzene ring in, so it's something to think about. So we'll work on that tomorrow in class. See you tomorrow.